everybody. It's Tay. Welcome back to the PSW podcast. I'm here today with Shannon Rose. She's a PSW and we are excited to be here and to hear her story today on how she got into the profession and what sector she's working in. And thank you, Shannon, for being here. We appreciate you carving out time for us. So thanks a lot. Thank you for having me. Anytime, anytime. Nothing better to kick off PSW week than an actual PSW talking about why they're in the field and why they're passionate about it. So I'm really thrilled to dive into this and I'll just start it off with the very standard question. How did you get into this field? What drew you in? Uh, So the reason I became a PSW, I've always been a people person. Um, I've always had a passion for working with the elderly since I was knee high to a grasshopper. I've always loved uh, like old people. So like in the store, there would be um, the family that's like, oh, look at the little baby. And I'd be that little kid that's like, look at that cute old couple. (laughs) And just, I've always been drawn to working with the elderly. Um, For example, like if there was an elderly person eating by themselves, I'd get really sad when I was younger and be like, can I go sit with them? Um, So just just knowing since I was little that I've liked working with the elderly, that kind of had a big boost in me becoming a PSW. Um, Mm -hmm. and then, yeah, I've always wanted to help them. So that's why I became a PSW. That's really cool. And have you been in the field for long or? Uh, so I graduated from the program in April of 2020, right when the pandemic hit. Um, and then I was hired immediately at a long-term care home. And then from there, I kind of switched between what I wanted to do, but I've been in there since like two or three years now. Oh my gosh, what a time to graduate into the field. Like, yeah, when I on fire, you, that was when you started. Pretty much, yeah. It was like healthcare went like straight boom down and <laughs> I was right into it. I remember like at the start of the pandemic working, like me and my colleagues, we would talk about like these poor people that have just graduated, like what they're coming into right now. How yeah. was that for you? Like, how did you deal with that as a new grad? Uh, It was very stressful, especially because I didn't get to do like my graduation. Like I was super excited not only to go into the PSW program, but also to be able to graduate with all of these other people that shared the same interests and passion as I did. And then we weren't able to graduate like everybody else. So we all had to sit behind our computer screens and say congratulations and then never see each other again, which kind of sucked. Um. But at the same time, it made me feel good because I know that all those 70 people that were in my class are going out doing the same thing as I'm doing. So that's neat. Do you yeah. still talk to them? Is it kind of like a sense of community there? That's um, I know, like I talked to like three out of the 70, um, but I do follow them on social media. So I get to see some of their like journeys along the way. And it's pretty cool. I know a couple of them have went away to um, bridge into RN. Mm-hmm. So I think that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, that is cool. That's nice to have like a sense of community still. I've been talking with PSWs and I know that like commonality with a lot of us and especially with new grads is that you feel a little isolated and alone when you first start. Yes. It's nice that you've kind of developed these ties with your classmates that you can kind of carry on as you progress and work further as a PSW so that's really nice to hear that that that's happening yeah Um, and also the other thing too was like when you graduate it's a whole different experience than like if you're in high school and you get a job at McDonald's versus now where you graduate from a program where you're actually going out and like becoming a big difference in the world it's a completely different uh aspect and look on life it's neat I think like I know a lot of us too, when we talk about why we got into the field, there is like that fulfillment aspect that I think is just fueling all of us. And it's being able to be with people in their most vulnerable time. And it's quite literally what you do. So that's like, I totally get that. Like you come fresh out of school and you're like, I just helped someone shower and they wouldn't have been able to shower. Like that feels good, you know, or I just held my hand and was like, thanks for being here. Like that sort of stuff that you're like, what? Like, you don't, you don't think about it until it happens. And then you're like, yeah. gosh, that was so special. You know, like I didn't, I didn't see that coming. It's such but. a rewarding job. Like I would never trade what I do for the world. I love, I love what I do. And I think I'm going to be doing it for, for a very long time. <laughs> Good. That's great. I love that. That's so cool. Um, what sector are you still in? You're still in um, long-term care then. That's the sector you're in. Right? No, I switched over to home care. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Tell me about that. What was that like? Uh, I like it. I actually enjoy home care more than long-term care home. Um, only reason being, I am a very client-driven person. Uh, I like to be able to provide care for per- for a person based on who they are and what their needs and wishes are uh, versus like what size brief they wear and what sling they are, um, which in long-term care home, that's basically how a person is known, their name, their brief, and their sling, which is very unfortunate. Uh, whereas home care, you actually get to have that one-on-one time with a person. You get to know their family, their friends, their pets, um, their whole life story, and you get to sit down and actually have those conversations with them, which I find is very important, um, especially to a resident's health and safety. I think that's a key component because it's very important for their mental health to be able to have that extra person that they can talk to, especially if they don't have a family member or friend that is there for them. Yeah, I do think that like long-term care is a little bit more like clinical kind of, if that's yes. a word, but it is more like go to this person, perform care, you know, like your patient ratios are crazy and you're running a lot too, but there's some, some fulfillment in that too. Like I know people, I know myself too, you get residents that you really jive with and it's like, oh, this is nice. It but is. I know home care, it's a little bit, it's not like a slower pace in the sense that you weren't doing a lot, but it's a bit slower in the sense that you have an hour for this person sometimes, hopefully if they don't double book you or something crazy happens, but yeah. I know. <laughs> no, like it's a little bit you have a little bit more time to be a little bit more personal with people which exactly really lovely you know and especially like I personally like that um connection with the like the person I'm working with I want to know why their daughter went off to school for whatever they went off to school for or why they like to keep their fork on the left side of the counter or like something like that. But those things are very important to me. Whereas a long-term care home, you don't really, unfortunately get the choice when you live there. It's more just you're here. Now you're in your room. Okay. That's it. And especially during COVID, that was one of the hardest things coming out of school uh, to comprehend was how do I, what do you mean? I can't spend five minutes with this person to sit down and talk. Nope. You have to be You have to get them dressed, change them, bathe them, whatever you have to do, brush their teeth and get them out into the dining room within 10 minutes. Well, I can't even get myself dressed in 10 minutes. So I can't imagine how this person is feeling being rushed. And I mean, just, yeah, it doesn't make any sense to me, but that's, that's the way it is, I guess. (laughs) In some aspects, I feel like it's, this sounds horrible and this is not every long-term care home, but in some of them, it's like, a factory like you know like yeah. you're going, just producing here and- here 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 okay now you're done next person here 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 done next person which sucks because they're not like uh they're not a robot they're a person and they deserve to be treated as one but unfortunately with the time restraints in long-term care sometimes it doesn't feel like they're being treated as people yeah or even the isolation into their rooms which was just like hard to to deal with yes. even just like a healthcare worker. And I know that we got, you know, like we're not stuck in a room. So like good for us, but I know that that was hard as well to just be like, sorry, like I have to just keep you in your room today. Like, I'm sorry, you know, and like especially for the people that like to go, like go out and go outside, you have to say like, oh, we have to keep you in your room today. And then they get all upset and you're like, well, I can't even spend time with them because I have to go to the next person. And now they're even more agitated than they were before. So it was very unfortunate. And I'm very glad that things have died down from, from what they were. But yeah, yeah, as a student who was fresh out of school going in during a pandemic, it was very hard for me mentally and physically to be able to go through all the steps that I had to go through to be able to keep up to myself. Um, But, but I did it and I still am doing what I'm doing. So (laughs) yeah, that's like a very huge test right at the start, I think. And your PPE too, like, it was like, you better remember how to don and doff because your mask better be on, right? Take your gown and your gloves off properly. And there's someone watching you down the hallway, making sure you do all this properly. So it was, it was a very stressful time, but we all did it. So (laughs) yeah. Yeah. It was just like heightened. Everything was heightened. And it's not like you didn't use your PPE before, but it was like, 
every single person was full precautions and it was like wow like do you remember the day when we just like had to wear a mask sometimes and gloves sometimes yeah. and it was like, appropriate it like it was mind-boggling to think about what it was like before the pandemic and then, and then I- hearing all the people like oh I don't want to wear a mask well I also don't want to wear this space suit that I have to go into someone's room to give them care but here we are like I'm providing care for your family member in the safest way I can you can wear a mask for five minutes in the grocery store yeah it was hot too that people oh, it was in the summertime it was like can't wait to go home <laughs> It's like wearing a garbage bag, honestly. That's like pretty much, you know. And yeah. they're resistant, like they were tight, and then you sweat, so they like stick to you even more. It was, oh. <laughs> it was a workout. Work was a yeah. workout. I it wish I could Cardio? try. Who needs the gym? <laughs> I yeah, honestly. And your watch is like, wow, you're really doing great. If you have like one of the Apple watches or something, and they're like, yeah, oh, I have one of them. I'm like, yeah, I feel it. Yeah, I'm working <laughs> out. Thanks. <laughs> so. Home care is your niche is basically what I'm grasping from this. Like that's the place where you feel like you belong. Yes. And you liked the personal aspect with people and being able to kind of have time with them to spend with them. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, I think it should be like, not common practice, but like, I, I feel like there's nothing wrong with shopping around for a place that you like and figuring out what you like. And I don't think a lot of people realize that the PSW can be utilized in different ways and in different settings. And it's nice to hear, you know, someone like yourself knew was like, no, long-term care is not for me, went to another field, you know, and is like very thrilled about it. It's really nice to hear that you shopped around. Yes. I've actually, so when I was in high school, I did um, my placement so you got to like choose a co-op and I did one that was competitive and I actually was one of I think it was three I don't remember now uh one of three students that got chosen um out of I don't know so many people to work at palliative care in Woodstock Hospital and then I also did uh the M3 300 or 200 unit so it was really cool experience to be able to right out of school go right into palliative care and see what that was like yeah. uh, and that was another thing that I really really strive to move forward in is palliative care I really like palliative care myself which I know like sounds a little weird but you know it's it's a very special it is our job that it's I really very special do. yeah I do value it a lot too I totally can understand where you're coming from with that so I have a couple more questions okay <laughs> So when you were in school, it wasn't all online, right? Like it was more textbook, in-person experience. Clinical. Clinical. Yeah. Yeah. The whole nine yards. Yep. How was it learning by the book and then jumping into your placements? Completely different. I heard that from someone else. Like I was just discussing this with someone else this morning and they were like, yeah, it's like not basically not the same. Yeah. 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 So like what they teach you by the book is, I don't even know how to explain it. Like, yeah, completely different than clinical and what you do in your everyday life within the workplace. Um, I thought it was going to be at least close to the same thing. Like some of the things you can use, um, like knowledge wise and put towards your workplace, but otherwise it's just like, why, why did I, I, why did I learn this? Like, it was cool though. Like I liked what I learned and it was really like comprehensive, but I yes. noticed too that there was a bit of a gap or like, I think too, I was also discussing this with another PSW that you allow yourself like a grace period after you graduate to kind of be like, listen, like, I'm going to be humbled for a few minutes as I work through this. Like, I'm probably going to make a mistake or two and just yep. like allowing yourself to have the space to do that and not freak out yeah entirely you know within 10 seconds of graduating yeah I just wanted to know what that was like for you because I've noticed a big bit of a gap from new grads that have had the online programs and then people like you know you and me that graduated well you graduated kind of in the pandemic I was pre-pandemic but it was similar you know we still got the in-person experience with our with our learning but I did notice the same thing and I just thought we kind of need to ask you like how how did that pan out for you too yeah it was it was 
interesting. Like most of the things I learned, I I personally do use in my field, but there were some things now when I've had experience in years working in the field going, hmm, well, they didn't teach us this. And that's something that's kind of important. Like personally, I don't think they touched enough on dementia and how to um, like, what's the word I'm looking for? I guess work with someone with dementia. Same with palliative care. I know a bunch of people who are like, well, I don't know what to do if this person, like, what, what do I do? And those are the two main things that you would think that would be very important in our role, um, which we don't really get taught as much as we should have. Yeah. Approaching, reapproaching, like all of that stuff I find. Yeah. And techniques and how to like de-escalate a situation or if a family member is upset, how to help them while you're helping the family member, just stuff like that, which I don't think was touched upon as much as it should have been. Yeah. It's kind of like a skill you, you learn over time. Like pretty this much is- you learn and experience and then you're like, oh, well I did this once and it worked. So let's try it again. Yeah. Or your colleagues like, Hey, this is how we normally deal with this. And you're like, wait, I never would have thought of that. Like, yeah. So it's kind of cool to learn all the time, but to kind of cap this off, I just want to know if you could give a piece of advice to any new grads or anybody considering becoming a PSW, what would it be? Hmm. Um, I guess just follow your heart. Um, being a PSW is very rewarding. Um, and you're making a difference in people's lives. So just remember that you are the happiness and you're bringing the joy to someone's world. If that doesn't make you feel good, well, I hope it does. (laughs) Um, Because it does for me, knowing that I'm the sunshine in someone's day is the best feeling in the world. Um, So yeah, just follow your heart and just remember that you're doing something that not a lot of people can do. And remember that you are, you are the sunshine in someone's day. That's really, that's a really nice way of saying that. That was <laughs> cool. The sunshine. Peace of the sunshine. I really think that's special. Well, thank you for taking the time to talk with us and for all of your words of wisdom, but also like inspiration. You're very passionate about the job. It sounds like you're thrilled to be here. And I love that. And it just sounds like you're very genuine. And I just think it's, it's a nice conversation to have again. And I've had a few of them and it's just every time I keep being like, this is so nice. I love this. <laughs> just talking to other PSWs and hearing about why they love being a PSW. It's just very cool to me. It warms the heart. It does. It does. But I keep repeating myself on camera and I'll be like, that was really, really well said. And I'm like, you said that to so many people, but it is true. It's so true. So thank you so much. I really, really appreciate you coming on here, Shannon. Thank you for having me. Anytime, anytime. Uh, Thank you to everybody who's been listening and for your continued support. And I hope that this has touched a PSW or two right in the heart. Shannon, you are sunshine. So that was wonderful. And (laughs) thank you for all of your your lovely words today. I hope everybody has a great day. Take care. Bye.